right, everyone. Welcome to our Learn About Summer Reading Adventure all together now. Uh, we are so happy that you're here with us. My name is Renee Edwards, and I am the Program and Educational Services Director for Fairfax County Public Library. And my colleague is Tina Moraz, and I'm the Early Literacy Outreach Coordinator for Fairfax County Public Libraries. So today, we are gonna look at three things pretty much. We're gonna break down Summer Reading 2023. We're gonna show you how you can participate in Summer Reading using Beanstack via the website and the app. And then throughout the presentation, we're gonna pause for questions. So we wanna kind of start our presentation tonight with a question for you. So what do you hope to learn this evening? Is there a question that you have that you're hoping will answer? Why did you come to tonight's presentation? If you could pop that into chat. Aw, we love that you love the library. <laughs> Learn about the activities. We're so happy you love librarians and libraries. We have a really great job. Learn about Beanstack. Yay, participating as an adult. It's for we, you too. It's for us too. That's right. Learn about the summer reading challenges. How to use Beanstack. Oh, thank you, Kim. I love the people who are saying, I want to learn about the adult summer reading program. Yes, all these wonderful adult participants. All right, I feel like the questions and comments that we're getting, we are going to address in this presentation. Um, so I feel like we're on target. How do you feel, Tina? <clears throat> I feel like we're on it. All right, perfect. All right, I'm gonna check the, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a kid tonight. We're at 26. Okay, <laughs> we did it. 26 participants, I'm very excited. All right, um, so Tina's gonna talk a little bit about the actual program. Okay, so this year's uh, Youth and Adults Participants will have similar programs. So last year, the adult challenge was more activity centered and based on our survey results, you all told us you wanted to be more reading focused. We heard you and this year, our focus for all age groups is on reading or listening to books. So those kids and adults who listen as they're traveling on, on trips or Adults, when you're commuting, I know I do it. I listen to a book. That will count. But we still have a few activities for each age group just to kind of throw some variety in there. So participants can log books, enter time reading, or complete activities. So how will you participate? We have different goals for each age group. Oh, did I skip way too far ahead? Let me go back one. So how will we participate? So there's different goals for each age group. So first to second grade, they will earn 15 badges and we'll talk about how that translates to the paper log in a little bit. Third to sixth grade is 10 badges, teens 10 badges and adults 10 badges. And that's a beautiful thing to someone who has number OCD 15 and 10 easy to remember. So here you see our birth through sixth grade reading log. So the program is going to go on from June 16th, which we've already started, through August 18th. And so you see here on the page that we have, whoopsies, oh, thank you. So we have log books or reading time. So you can log either a book title, 
or you can log reading sessions of 20 minutes. And you'll see here, there's a little like finished certificate at the bottom. And that means third through sixth graders, that's your finish line. So you either read 10 books or 10 sessions of 20 minutes. Or if you go to the back, there's five activities that you can do to come mix it up a little bit. Now for those little littles, first to second grade, you see they go all the way down to 15. So they need to read the 15 books or 15 timed reading sessions or 20 minute reading sessions. I'm stuck on the 15 or mix in some activities as well. And I love that our marketing department put a cute little coloring sheet on here as well. Now for the teens, we have a similar log, but it only goes to 10 books. And so they can either read 10 books or the reading sessions are a little bit longer. So they can read for 10 30 minute sessions or mix in a few of the reading activities. All right, Renee, would you like to talk a little bit about the adult log? Yes. All right, I'm so glad that people in, their, in the chat recognize that the summer reading program is also for adults. I know the focus rightly so is on youth because we understand the importance of young people reading over the summer so they don't lose those valuable reading skills. But adults, we like reading too. We like participating in challenges and activities too and getting prizes as well. So I just wanted to emphasize that we do have a program for adults. It mirrors what we're offering our youth. So here, if you look at the program log, you can see you can read and log book titles, 10, or you can read 10 sessions of 30 minutes. So theoretically, you could read one book. Let's say you're reading War and Peace, and that book is Forever Long. You may read that one book, and it takes 10 sessions of 30 minutes, and you're done with the program. Or maybe you're a fast reader. You can read books, read two books three books a week, then you can log your titles read. And then also similar to the youth, we want you to break up the reading with a little bit of fun. So you can choose to complete any of the activities that's listed on the paper log that is also part of the adult summer reading um, challenge or adventure. Oh, thank you, Maureen. I'm glad you like the activities. We try to really choose, like Tina said, age-appropriate activities for each age group. Okay, so for summer 2023, we brought back our I Kept Reading Log. So if you're using a paper log, once you finish, you filled it in, you've earned your 10 or 15 badges, you can return it to your local library branch. Doesn't matter which branch, we all have the same prizes pretty much. Uh, like there's some, we'll talk about that in a little bit because the adults have something special. But in general, everyone gets the same prizes. So you can take it to any library branch, get the same prizes. And, but when you're finished, if you want to keep track of your reading or you want your children to keep track of their reading for the rest of the summer after they finish the program, they can list their titles on the I Kept Reading log. But it's just a log. You won't get any additional prizes for completing the I Kept Reading log. It's just something for you to keep track of what you've read over the summer. And Tina, let's stop for a minute because we're getting, we have two questions or one question, questions from one person specifically about summer reading. So the program, summer reading is June 16th to, to August 18th. So it's about nine weeks, June 16th to August 18th. We're gonna talk about the prizes right now. And you need to submit your reading log by August 18th, the last day of summer reading. 
Thank you, Tina. Yeah, thank you, Renee. Oh, and I see where the, the term all together now come from. So we participate in the, oh my goodness, Renee, I'm not gonna say this right. I know the acronym. What is it? The Collaborative Library. Collaborative something Symp library program. Yeah, Collaborative Symp Yes, I think the S is Symposium or something. So it's a nationwide program. There's another competing program that's I read, but the state of Virginia uses CSLP and the librarians get together every year and come up with a theme that they agree on throughout the country. So anyone using this particular program has the theme all together now. Uh, some uh, locations use I read. So yeah, that's where it comes from. Oh, I don't know if they got, oh, I didn't even put that together, John. I don't know if it's from, it is, a, I think it's, yeah, I think that is a Beatles song. I like that. Oh, so, and then I also see what if you're only using the app and not the paper log? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, so prizes, we got some great prizes this year. Everyone has been asking for it and it is back, our summer reading youth coupon booklet. So uh from birth to teens they'll receive the youth coupon booklet as well as the park authorities coupon sheet and then adults will also receive a separate coupon sheet as well as the park authorities coupon sheet now as a result you'll notice that the coupon booklet is not as thick as it used to be and that's because the parks were a part of the coupon booklet in the past but since we now have an official summer reading program for adults, it worked out to just have that sheet separate so that we can award it to both youth and adults. And also, I just wanted to let you all know that we did reach out to some of our, all of our previous sponsors. We heard back from some, we didn't hear back from others. Some have closed and we reached out to some new sponsors and it is not as easy as you would think to get local sponsors to donate thousands and thousands of free items or deeply discounted items for finishers. So we were really, really, you know, out there trying to get new sponsors. It was really, really tough. But that being said, we are open to receiving information about new potential sponsors and with their contact information because a lot of places people tell us about it's like oh why didn't you talk to walmart why didn't you talk to target amazon those are huge corporations and we have no idea who to ask so if you have a contact at any of these big locations or you know a small community business that you think would be willing to donate to the summer reading program, we're happy to take that information and we usually have it on our end of the program survey. Is there anything you wanted to add, Renee? Yeah, and I also wanted to say, sometimes we get comments from um, our participants about, I had to drive all the way to Reston for fill in the blank coupon. Um, all of our many, if not all, of our sponsors are local businesses. They don't have franchises. Um, it's very rare that we can connect with a business that's like McDonald's or Wendy's. Those are the exceptions, not the rule. Um, we get lots and lots of support from our local businesses who work in various parts of the county. Um, and like Tina said, we're asking businesses to donate free or deeply discounted items for not hundreds of finishers, not hundreds and hundreds, but thousands of finishers. So that's quite a huge ask for local businesses who I might add um, struggled during the pandemic. Um, however, that being said, I am so proud of the local businesses who rallied, who supports the summer reading program. I am very proud of the coupons that we're offering our, our customers um, this summer and I, I hope you'll be pleased with them too. And that brings me to our next slide because we had a question specifically in chat about the types of coupons. 
So I'm going to show you in a few minutes our summer reading web page and where you can find a list of the coupons um, that will be available to those who complete the summer reading program. So now I just want to talk a little bit about some of our contests and kind of offerings that we're providing for teen and adult participants of summer reading. Uh, for Love of Country has been around, I think, for 14 years. So this will be our 14th or 15th year of offering this poetry and essay writing contest to rising 7th, 8th, and ninth graders. Each summer, they are invited to write on a, a theme. Um, this year's theme or question is, what does democracy mean to you? These essays and poems are judged by um, a former teacher in Fairfax County, and he uses a rubric to help us determine which poems and essays will receive a gold, silver, bronze, or certificate of merit. Uh, we celebrate our winners at a uh, celebration in September, September or October. Our next teen contest that I want to talk about is our Teen Chop Challenge. This is our second summer offering this. It is for teens who are 12 to 18 years old. And this is where we invite teens to make a dish using three mystery ingredients. So this summer, the mystery ingredients are a can of black beans, one box of Jiffy corn muffin mix, and uh, cocoa hot chocolate powder. And then the object is you take these three ingredients and make some wonderful savory dish. Uh, these, this recipe will be submitted to an online form. I will show you that in a few minutes. And then we're gonna have youth services managers look at everybody's recipes, look at the pictures, and one winner will be chosen and they will get a teen chopped apron. And we will have two runner ups who will receive a recipe book. Um, I also wanna add that we are also hosting several cooking basic workshops because we realize that teens may need a little bit of help in determining measurements and, and writing recipe cards. Um, we're hosting these workshops at multiple branches and we will pop the link in description and Tina's already inserted the link to those uh, cooking workshops. The last contest I want to talk about is one specifically for adults, because we matter too. Uh, this will be our first year offering a short story contest that we're calling The World We Write. This contest is the month of July, and we're encouraging people to write a 250-word story using one of five different prompts, and I will show you that in a few minutes. Uh, Branch staff will read over the stories and we will choose five winners who will receive a $25 Visa gift card and a certificate. And these winning stories will also appear in our Branch Out magazine. As you can see here, not only is summer reading about reading and getting prizes, it's also about participating in a variety of summer reading events that are in branches throughout Fairfax County. We're not gonna go through this list. <laughs> it's pretty lengthy. We're quite proud of our summer offerings, but Tina is gonna pop into chat the link to our library events calendar. And if you click on that link, it will show you all of the programs we have available for all ages. I'll drop that in in one second. I'm going to, I'll drop it in for you. Okay, great. Because I <laughs> wanted to tell everyone about our great finale for our younger set and families. We are having Eric Litwin, the author of the Pete the Cat books, the original Pete the Cat books. He's going to do a special concert for us on Saturday, August 12th 
from 10 until 11.45 at the Fairfax County Government Center. Registration opens on July 22nd. We're super excited to have him come out. I did not realize he lived in the area, so yay, it was a big win. And so it was a great way to wrap up our summer of events. And we have something for customers of all ages, from puppet shows to animals to painting to magic. It's going to be a great summer. All right, so what I want to do is take just a few minutes to show you our summer reading web page. We have really tried to put all the information that you could possibly need um, on these pages. So what I'm going to do is share a different page. And then Tina, if you could pop into chat um, this main page, or I can grab it. I can grab but, it, no problem. Okay, all right, thank you. But the link that Tina's putting into chat will take you here. This just provides general information about our summer reading program for youth and adults. But I just wanna point your attention to here. We're offering thanks to the Fairfax Library Foundation, um, a raffle for people who register by June 27th. Uh, we have 80 gift cards to Squall Books, and we're gonna award those 80 gift cards to 20 preschoolers, 20 school-age kids, 20 teens, and 20 adults. Um, thank you, Fairfax Library Foundation, for that wonderful donation. Um, if you look on this page, you will see here, we have two kind of other pages, one for youth and one for adults. So I just want to quickly take you through the Youth Summer Reading page. Uh, here is where we have information that is specific to the youth program. And I want to point out here, the reading logs that Tina highlighted earlier are on this page. Youth summer reading, scroll down to the bottom and you have links to all of the paper logs if you choose not to use Beanstack. Also under Youth Summer Reading 2023, you have summer reading details by age. This breaks it down by the three age groups under youth, and you can see information that is specific to each age group. And we've also included the reading logs under each um, age as well. Also book lists too with suggested authors. Under you summer reading, we have our summer reading events uh, specific to that to youth, and here is where you can find the teen contest that I mentioned earlier for love of country, and we have a link where you can upload your poems or essays here, and here is information about the teen chop challenge if you have teens interested in cooking. And we also have here all of the workshops we're offering at branches that will teach teens how to cook. Then very quickly, if we look at the adult summer reading pages, this is all for the older folks who want to participate. We have also, as mentioned earlier, the adult reading log is here. You can print that out if you don't wish to use Beanstack. We have summer reading events for adults as well. Here's where you can find additional information about the short story contest. And you will see here the pops. The online submission form will be available when the contest begins on July 1st. We also have something, a special program that we're piloting this summer, and I hope it's successful, a question mark about that, but we're inviting people from our community to tell us your stories. Tell us your stories about 
somebody that did something kind, some a friendship that was special to you, um, someone who went out of their way to do something kind for you or yours, uh, or what happened in a really difficult time where everybody just kind of came together. We want to hear your stories. And we're going to record those stories and upload them to a StoryCorps website where people can come and listen to the special stories that you are sharing um, with us. So you, you can see here, we have three branches where we are asking people um, to come to share their stories. Are there any questions about anything that we have talked about today so far? Because we're not done yet. <laughs> Ashley had a question about the uh, writing contest. She asked okay. if an adult can enter the contest more than once by writing on two prompts. Ooh, no. <laughs> a really good question. But let's stick to one. I might have to add that to the, the rules. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> That's a really good question. But yes. just only pick one writing prompt. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Is there a quiz? Oh, we should have given everyone a pop-up quiz. <laughs> oh, no quizzes. <laughs> no quizzes. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> no, we're not going to quiz you on the books that you read. We're not going to, yes. We just want, we just want people reading and having fun and participating. That's it. Our goals are simple. Any other questions or comments before we start looking at Beanstack? Because that's the next um, agenda item. All right, and Lillian is raising her hand, so we will ask her to unmute. So Lily, you should be able, let me try it again. You should be able to unmute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, sorry. Uh, I signed my daughter for the All Together Now program for the summer reading adventure. And my question is, how do I get in the program? It's the first time we are kind of new in the area. I'm, I'm, I'm not from this country, but I would like her to kind of, you know, learn to read everything so she's not uh, so far on reading. And I got this, uh, this uh, uh, I already signed her on July 6th, on June 10th, sorry. But then I was kind of worried how I do to start the program. Well, your timing is perfect. Your question is perfect because Tina is getting ready to uh, show you how you use Beanstack to okay. participate. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and then Motorola Moda says, I noticed when you log your book, you don't have to give a summary anymore. No, you don't. Uh, we just ask you to tell us the title of your book. But yeah, just like John said, there's not a quiz. We we don't need you to prove that you've read it. We we trust that you're um, doing what you're stating on your logs. Are there any other questions about anything we've talked about before we move on to show you how to use Beanstack? Okay, I think we're good. Oh, Renee, did you want to share why we're using Beanstack? Oh, I completely forgot about that. Absolutely. 
I'm not going to share my screen again, uh, but absolutely. You know, a lot of people, I think being stacked, you have a love-hate relationship with it. It's new. You don't know how it works. You like the paper logs. But there are a lot of great benefits to using Beanstack. Um, we really like that it kind of mirrors Goodreads, where you can track your reading online using a website or app. You can use Beanstack year-round. You don't just have to use it for our, our challenges. You can use it simply to track your reading. Um, we're also going to use Beanstack for more reading adventures and reading challenges. We have the winter reading challenge that's coming up later this year. And our hope is we can start using Beanstack to encourage reading on a variety of other different themes and ideas. Uh, and what we love in terms of being a librarian and using Beanstack on the kind of back end is that it really gives us reliable statistics and data that we couldn't really get before when we were just using paper logs. Um, and I love that families can create an account at all their readers of people in their household and use Beanstack to track reading for everyone using one account. And that's what Tina is gonna show um, in a few seconds. And what I really like about Beanstack too, it has almost like a social media vibe. You can invite friends and have challenges and competitions. Um, you can have a leaderboard where you can keep track of all your readers and who's read the most books. Uh, it's, it's really an engaging, robust program. So I'm gonna, Turn it over to Tina, and we're going to go ahead and show you the web-based Beanstack. All right. I just shared my screen. Can everyone see it? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So this is the home screen for Beanstack. And you see here, it says Fairfax County Public Library Reading Challenges. So if you have an account, you can log in on the upper right hand corner here, but if you scroll down, you'll see this challenges section. So these are all of the current active challenges that we have going on right now. Tells you how our summer reading program works. And if you have any questions or need help you can email this lib library events at fairfaxcounty.gov. It's an account that gets checked by Renee and myself. Renee looks at it every day. So if you ask a question, you're gonna get a quick response. If you are new to Beanstack and you need to create an account, you can register an individual or you can register a family as Renee said. And I love this too, we're not gonna talk about this tonight, but I love that you can register a class or a group. As the early literacy person, I go to preschools around the county and those kids can participate in the program in their classrooms, which is awesome. There's also another place to sign up for an account here. We feature some of our events that are going on on the homepage the sponsors of our program. And what I think is really, really cool is that it has an embedded language translator. So you can translate the page into any of these languages. So it's accessible to all of these languages, which is really cool, which we couldn't possibly translate all of the reading logs into all of these languages. So I think that's really awesome. So now I'm going to show you how to create an account. We're not going to, I'm not going to actually create one, but I'll show you what it looks like. So we're going to go in and register an individual or a family. And so the first thing that it's going to ask you is if you've previously used Beanstack. And we are going to say no. And next, it's going to ask you if you're just registering yourself or if you're an adult registering a child. So I'm going to click on that option so you can see how the family account's created. So the first thing that is asked for is the adult's information. So 
while there are a lot of there's a lot of fields here, the only ones that are required have the red asterisk next to it. So your first name, last name, your email address, which they'll ask you to confirm, your zip code, and then you're going to create a password with at least six characters, confirm it, and then what your primary library is. And all of our branches are listed in the drop down box. But if you are participating in the program and you don't have a regular library or you don't visit our library very often, that doesn't mean you can't participate in the program. We have an option right here that says, I don't visit a library in Fairfax County, which is perfectly fine. We know people are here for the summer. Kids are here for the summer from, you know, different places visiting grandma, grandpa. So they can still participate. So after you've entered the adult's information and in Beanstack, that's called the account creator, you're gonna enter the reader's information. So the child's first name, last name, their age, library cards number here, you do not have to enter it. And then the grade level that the child's going to be in this upcoming school year. So in the fall, the grade that they're going into. After you enter this, since we didn't put anything, I'm not gonna hit the next button, but it'll ask you if you have any additional children. And so you keep going until you have all of the kids put in. And even though it says child, I've done it where I added my husband because he's not gonna go in and add himself. So you can add your, you know, any adults in the household, just scroll down to the bottom and do an 18 plus. And then once you finish adding all the children, then it'll ask you if you want to be registered as a reader. And I just misspoke. It'll ask you if you want to be registered as a reader. And you can say yes if you want to do the adult challenge. And then if you want to add another adult, it'll ask you if you want to add that second or third adult. And then you are ready to sign into Beanstack. So I have my little dummy account here. So we're going to take a little adventure into Beanstack as if we already have an account, but not this side. It always takes me to the admin side first, so <laughs> ignore this one. It's good. So here's the public side. So when you log in, this is what you'll see. And right here we have Maggie Simpson. And Maggie's a kid in our family. We don't want to look at her account. So we're going to click on her name and we're gonna change readers. So this is where you can go through your family and log different people's information by changing the, the reader. And it'll bring you to this screen where you can select a reader. You can even add a reader here. So I wanna click on Marge because she's one of our grownups in our account. And so once we go to her page, You'll see at the top we have challenges, friends, if she has any friends that she's added, all of her badges that she's earned throughout the time that she's had an account, and then just her reading log. So if a program's not active, she could just log books here. So we see that she's not currently participating in any challenges. So we're gonna scroll down and, oh, here's the adult summer reading adventure. And all we're going to do is click on it and it'll ask us if we want to join the challenge or if we're not interested, but of course we want to join because it's going to be so much fun. So now Marge is registered for the adult summer reading program and she has unlocked her registration badge. So now if she wants to start logging her reading, she would just click on the adult summer reading banner here. And we'll see an overview of the program. There's a link for a paper log and the I kept reading log. You can also see the events here, the short story contest. And you can go to, this is a link that gets you to that page that Renee was just sharing. And we can see here that she's already earned a badge. So this is her registration badge. Now, if we wanna see all the badges that are offered as an adult in the adult summer reading program. Oh wait, that's not the right one. Hold on one sec. 
This thing does not like me sometimes. This way. Well, there we go. I clicked on the wrong one. It's the one down here. So we click on badges. So the one that just says badges and it's only for the adult summer reading. And that mixes me up every single time. So you can see here that they're all grayed out. That means this reader hasn't earned any of these badges. The registration badge and the completion badge, those don't count towards the 10 badges that she needs to earn. So we're gonna go into log reading and activities to start logging for our challenge. So we wanna log for March and it, if we wanted to switch readers, another place we can do it is right here. We have the drop down box, but we wanna keep logging for Marge. We're gonna log books. And here you see the calendar for the month. And as you see, the past days are bolded and you can click on them so you can retroactively log your book. So I could go back to the 10th, or no, the programs are on the 16th. I could go back to the 16th and log my reading, but I can't go into the future. Next, it'll ask how many books did you complete? She can do one or let's say, I was on vacation, I read three. It's optional to list here to list the title and author. You don't have to, so we can just click log reading. And ta-da, I've unlocked the badge. I've read three books, so I've earned one, two, three badges. So then I can just X out of here. So I'm on my way. I've got seven more to earn. Hmm. Now I think I wanna do some timed reading. So if I go back to the landing page, and click on log reading and activities. This time I'm going to complete an activity. And so here is where you can enter your timed reading. Or if you scroll down, you can also log those five special activities. So we're going to click on our read for 30 minutes. And it asks you a question, what book did you read for 30 minutes? Here you have to add something, otherwise it won't let you mark it. So I'm going to be a super reader and say that I read War and Peace for 30 minutes. And I've earned another badge. And there are also some special Beanstack badges that don't have anything to do with the challenges, but it's just to get you excited about doing different things. So I've completed my first Beanstack activity. So Beanstack super excited for me. And then from here, I can either X out or I can go back and scroll down. Oh, and you see here, I completed this one. So now it's in color. So that's how you know you've completed an activity. If you wanted to complete uh, attend a library program, it's gonna ask you which program did you attend? And I'm just gonna say Eric Whitland for now. And then there's also a link here. So it takes you directly to the library events page so you can see what's coming up. Click that box here. And I've unlocked another badge. So I'm just gonna X out of here. So now, when I look at the activity badges, I've completed one and then two, because that one's down there. When I click on my logging badges, I've completed three. And then I've compl completed one of the challenge badges. And these are the ones that don't count but you know that you're done when the complete challenge is in color and you know that you're done because you have this little reward certificate thing here. So you know that you're able to go into the branch 
and say, hey, can you look me up? I finished the summer reading challenge on, in Beanstack. This is my name and my email address. And they'll be able to look you up and then give you your rewards and they'll be able to claim it for you. So you want to remember that the 10 badges are either activity or logging badges or 15, depending on the challenge. And those two challenge badges don't count towards that number. And then click on rewards here. It, this is also how you would know if you completed the challenge, this will be unlocked. So you know that you're eligible to get the prize. And then I just wanted to say a quick note about the challenges for the little ones. So we don't expect like the preschoolers to sit in front of the computer while you're logging the challenges, but you can print out one, print either print out or pick up one of the reading logs for the younger kids or even the older kids and have them write their book titles on it. And then just go in and do like a batch, you know, I can't think of the word, just enter like the number, they read 15 books and then complete it all at once. So that way they're involved in the process, but we don't expect them to sit at the computer and log books, but you can show them the awesome badges. I also wanted to show you, if we look at Marge here, if you wanted to add an additional reader, you can add them here. You can also add them in the change reader feature. There's the little add a reader box here. And if you wanted to delete a reader, even you can just simply go into edit. Oh, and another thing I'd like to mention is the email notifications. So you can kind of get notifications to keep you motivated during the summer, get emails about upcoming challenges. So you really want to make sure you click yes. So in this account, I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes and save it. But I'm also going to go, ah, show you guys, ah, you know, maybe I don't want Marge on the account anymore. And you can go down here to delete reader. And all you have to do is click these two boxes that you say this is irreversible. I understand that all of their data is going to be gone forever and ever. Amen. And then you can permanently delete them. This little gear here is where you would sign out. And you can also edit account here. And I think that is Beanstack, the quick and dirty of Beanstack. Any questions? We did have a few questions in chat, but I was answering them as okay. they were coming in. Um, and I have to share Motorola's uh, question. Uh, one of the activities on our program logs is attending a library event. And everyone, you're at a library event this evening. So you've already completed one of the activities. As an adult, you're one up. <laughs> Or if you have kids participating, I think we have a parent here with her, her daughter. So there she, you go. She has an event. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. And Renee is going to tell us a little bit about the Beanstack app. And we do have one question from Christine. Um, I guess this is for people in the audience, if you've used Beanstack before, have you used it outside of a challenge? Um, or are they primarily useful for, cha useful for challenges? Yes, to both those questions. You can use Beanstack to participate in the reading challenges that we're offering, and you can use it independently just to track your reading. So it's, it's two different uh, ways of using this one program. So Tina showed you how to 
click on the Beanstack link that I put into chat. You click on that link. You can access Beanstack through the web page, just like any other web page. But we also have an app for your phones. And we want to take a few minutes now to show you how would you use the app um, to participate in our reading challenges. However, there's a, a catch. Um, for some reason, Zoom would not let me share the screen of my, my, my iPhone. So I'm not able to show you in real time how you would participate in our summer reading adventure using the app. Um, unfortunately, I have to go and show you um, my app demonstration um, from our winter reading challenge that we offered in December. So I'm actually going to share my screen and show you the video clip of how you use Beanstack to participate in a challenge, but it's talking about the winter reading. So just remember that. But everything that I'm showing you is still the same for our, our summer reading um, adventure program. I hope, that, I hope that makes sense. All right, so what I'm gonna do is share my screen. And before I bounce over to YouTube, I do want to show you, can everyone see that? Tina, can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. Um, on our summer reading page, we do have a section dedicated to all about Beanstack. So we try to anticipate any possible question that you may have. Um, so I would encourage you to look here. And for some of these um, sections, we also have videos walking you through the process as well. So that may be helpful. Uh, so all about being stacked that is on our summer reading page as well. But let me switch over to YouTube and I'm going to show you just a snippet from our winter reading challenge video using the app on your phone. Remember, though, this is going to talk about winter reading, but it still applies to um, our summer reading adventure. So let me go back and do it again because I need to enable sound. Oh, I did that already. OK, perfect ahead of the game and didn't even know it. Okay. All right, so you can see right here that I've already downloaded the Beanstack app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open that. I'm gonna click Let's Go. And now I need to find Fairfax County Public Library. There are many library systems across the country um, that use Beanstack. So I need to find Fairfax County Public Library. So I'm gonna click on at my library school or bookstore, find a site at the bottom, and I'm gonna type in Fairfax. And then I'm gonna select Fairfax County Public Library. And this is where if you have an account already, you can simply enter that. If you need to set up an account, then you're going to click on sign in underneath login. Right there, you go right there. And once you do that, it will look similar to what Tina showed you on the web based platform. So I'm not going to walk you through that, but it is you answering a series of questions and you can create additional readers or add additional readers to the account as well. I'm going to go ahead and just close that out and I'm going to paste in my email and password. Hope I typed that correctly. Yes, I did. So really quickly, I want to show you some of the kind of administrative features. So if you look in the top right hand corner, you're going to see a gear. If you click on that gear, this is where you can edit your account information. And you can also add other library systems who have Beanstack. So you can participate in multiple Beanstack challenges across various library systems. So I'm going to go back. If you click on readers, this is where you can see all of the readers that are part of your account. If you click on a reader, it is possible to edit that information. 
you can also add a reader at this point. So if you forgot to add a family member or someone told you they want to participate after you've set up an account, it is possible to go in and add additional readers. I'm gonna go back. We have a help function. I encourage you to use this. Beanstack has done a really great job of kind of figuring out what we need in terms of getting help using their app and website applications. I would encourage you to take a look at those. And then if I, I'm gonna go back. And then if you look next to the gear, you're gonna see a pink circle with some initials. Those are gonna be the initials of your readers. So if you click on that, you can now toggle between readers and add information to the challenges that they're participating in. So I'm gonna keep it on Charles. And now what I want to do is very quickly, because I'm not gonna go over everything. This is a pretty comprehensive app. So I'm just gonna kind of hit the highlights, but I'm gonna go over very briefly these icons at the bottom. The home button, shows you simply an overview of the current challenge that you are enrolled in or that that reader is enrolled in, books that they have read and entered, stats for that reader, badges that they have earned. If you click on the image of the, for the current reading challenge that the person is enrolled in, just like what Tina showed you, you're gonna see kind of an overview page with information specific to that challenge. I strongly encourage everyone before you participate in any challenge, please read the description. Please find out what the expectations are before you start participating. We do get a lot of questions sometimes from our participants because they're not quite sure what the goals are. So please take a look at the overview page. It will provide information. And we're gonna go over this a little later, but for each age group winter reading challenge, we do recognize that some people may not want to use Beanstack. They may want to use paper. So you will notice that we provide a link to a paper reading log because you do have that as an option. We encourage you to use Beanstack. It really helps us with our record, record keeping, but we do understand that people want paper as well, and it's, it's more convenient for some families. So we'll show you a little later what that paper log looks like. If we click on the badges tab at the top, this will simply show you badges that you've already earned as well as any other badges that are remaining that are grayscale or black and white. Activities will show you any activity badges that are part of the current challenge that you are enrolled in. And as you can see, if you see a little check mark and the badge is now in color, that means you have earned that virtual badge. The rewards tab, if you click on that, that tells you that when you complete this program, there is an award, there is a prize. You notice that it's black and white. So when it becomes a colored image, then you know that you have really completed the program. All right, so let's go down to log at the bottom. Let's click on that. This shows you a running record of all the books that you've entered into Beanstack. So you can see here all of the books that Charles has read recently. And I do wanna point out for you younger kids, it is possible to enter in the same book multiple times because we do realize that we like to reread our favorite books. And Beanstack will count those um, additional readings as well. Completed, the completed tab will show you an overview of all the books that you have completed and entered into Beanstack as being read. Badges 
will show you all of the badges that you have earned for the challenge that you are participating in. And then achievements are those kind of fun additional badges uh, that Beanstack provides that Tina showed on the website uh, platform. If we go back to the bottom of the screen and look at Discover, click on that, this simply shows you all the challenges that are available for the reader in that age range. If we click, click on activities, the activities tab at the top, this will show you any activity badges that are connected to the challenge that you are currently enrolled in. And what I really like is our book list tab. Uh, we upload book suggestions for each age group to give you an idea if you need some extra incentive or you, you want to try new books. And then lastly, if we go over here and click on community, this is where we can see upcoming events, this is the program that Tina is hosting on Saturday. And you can also see our sponsors. Lastly, I do want to point out the plus sign because I feel like for the challenges that you are participating in through the library, the plus sign is your best friend. I think the plus sign is the most direct way to participate in our winter reading challenge. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and you have the option of logging books or logging activities, which would be the timed read. So I'm going to click on reading. You select the reader that you're logging a book for. So I'm going to select Charles. This is where it got a little confusing for me. So listen up, people. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you some time and sweat and tears. There are two ways that you can log a book. You can log it without a title, or you, you can search for the title of the book that the reader read. So because this reader is three, I'm going to type in Pete the Cat. Oops, if I can spell. And search. And then there we go. I see Pete the cat. He did indeed read that book. So I'm going to click on it. And now you can go ahead and save this information. I'm going to save it. I wouldn't get caught up in the number of pages at, unless that's something that really speaks to you. I'm going to click on save. And then I get another quick little pop-up window where I can log this book as a quick complete. I can log reading or I can start a timer and read the book as the timer is running, which um, you don't need to do for the purpose of this winter reading challenge. So if you click on log reading, then you can toggle, did you finish reading the book on and then click done. And that book is logged and you will earn a badge for reading a book. Or you can select quick complete. And if you do that, it logs it for you automatically, no extra steps. And you can see that Charles has earned a badge for reading and entering that book. Another possibility with our, with our winter reading challenge, you can log books read or you can read for time. That is underneath activity. So if you click on activity, select your reader. And now, just like Tina said, maybe your child or maybe you as an adult, um, you can't read a book in one sitting. Or maybe you don't want to read a book in one sitting. You just want to read in increments of 30 or 20 minutes. So if Charles has read a book for 20 minutes, I've read the same book to Charles three times for 20 minutes. I can simply click on read for 20 minutes. I'm going to type in, I can't double dip, so I can't use Pete the cat anymore. 
got to use a different book. <laughs> so I'm going to say the book. That's the name of the book we read. And then I'm going to click in the radio button. And activity is completed and I have earned a badge. And don't forget, you can keep track of your badges here. So you can keep track of how many badges you have earned, but you have not earned, you've not finished the program unless you have this rewards button is now colored. So keep track of that. Sometimes people think that the registration and the completion badge counts to the total and it doesn't. It's logging books and logging time. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. All right, so that was a quickie run through of how to use the app. Um, again, it was specifically talking about the winter reading challenge, but all of that still applies um, to the summer reading adventure program as well. Um, we are slightly over time, and I'm so sorry that we, we went over by a few minutes. Are there any questions about anything that we've talked about this evening? Okay, if not, oh, thank you so much, Chris. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, don't forget you can go to lib library events at fairfaxcounty.gov and Tina or myself will um, respond to your questions. Please don't forget to use the All About Beanstack um, web pages that we've tried to anticipate every single question you may have. <laughs> so you might want to start there. <laughs> but we are here to help you. We want you to be successful no matter how you participate in our summer reading adventure. Tina, any last words before we say good night? No, thank you all so much for joining us. And we hope you'll all be participating in the program. And I was going to ask you, Renee, to share a little bit about the adult drawing at the end of the program. Oh, oh, um, something we started in 2019 when the Adult Summer Reading Program began is we created, thanks to the, the foundation, we create these really wonderful bags full of stuff. So we have um, umbrellas in this year's kind of bag. We have an umbrella. I think we have a mug. We have three um, gift cards, um, one to AMC, one to Barnes and Noble, and one to I think it's a Visa gift card. It is a brightly colored bag. We give one bag to each branch. And at the end of summer reading, branches will raffle that bag off to any adult finishers, adults who complete the summer reading adventure. It is a bag that has a value of about $175. So you are getting some really nice stuff. Um, what do you have to do to be entered into this raffle? Complete summer reading. That can be either via Beanstack um, or with the paper log. All right. If there are no other questions, um, thank you so much for being here. We really hope it was helpful. Thank you all so much. And I hope you all finish the program. Good night, everyone. Good night. And I'm going to stop recording.